Hey everybody, uh, this lesson is characteristics of function graphs. So it's just uh, they're just graphs, you guys, and functions just means we're, we're talking about the why stuff. So anyway, so our question is, what are some of the attributes of a function and how are they related to the function's graph? Okay, don't forget all your lessons can be found at mrmathlog.com. All right, so here we go. And then uh, there's a, a graphing calculator part on this. It's towards the end of the lesson, so I had to make a whole new video for that because it uh, took a long time already. So anyways, it's right after this one. You'll find it uh, underneath this one of, of module 1.2. Okay, so <clears throat> remember, you guys, a domain is all X value stuff. So on a graph, it's all left and right movement. So when it's uh, to the right of the Y axis, it's positive. When it's to the left, it's negative. You guys know that, right? And uh, range values are up and down movement. It's Y stuff. So when it's above the X axis, it's positive. And when it's below, it's negative. Okay. So here we go. We're going to identify attributes of a function from its graph. So here's a graph right here. So here, the domain, it goes from left to right at x equals 0 to x equals 11. And since they're, they're uh, filled in circles, then it's less than or equal to. So this says the set, that's what these uh, funny brackets are, the set of x such that, remember that's such that, x is between 0 and 11, including 0 and 11. So they call it inclusive, okay? And then the range, you guys, is up and down movement. So it, it starts, at, it goes all the way down to negative 1, it goes up to positive 1. So the range is um, the set of y values such that y is between negative 1 and positive 1, okay? That's this graph right here. So the values of the function on the interval x uh, from 1 to 3, remember these are, um, it doesn't have an equals bar, so they're open circles right here. Is it positive or negative? So here's here's uh, x equals 1 right here. Here's x equals 3. So the function are the y values. Is it, So it's above the x-axis, so it's positive, okay? All right, how about the values on the function from the interval x equals 8 to 9? So here's x equals 8 to 9, so it's this little portion right here. So that's below the x-axis. That's negative right there, okay? So a function is increasing on the interval if f of x sub 1 minus, uh, is less than f of x sub 2 when x sub 1 is less than x sub 2 for any x values on the interval. And that doesn't make any sense, I know. And all that means, you guys, that's just fancy mumbo-jumbo. It just means that the graph is going up on that interval. So if the graph is going up like this, it's increasing. And similarly, when it's going down, it's decreasing. Here's the fancy book mumbo-jumbo. And so it just means when it's going down, it's decreasing right there. Okay, so let's take that old graph right there and talk about increasing or decreasing. So on the interval x equals 2 to x equals 4, we're looking at the, uh, from this point all the way down to this point. Can you see it's going down? So it's decreasing right there. Okay, on the interval from 4 to 6, here's x equals 4, here's x equals 6. So it's talking about this piece right here. And that's going up, so it's increasing on that part right there. Okay, so for two points, x1 and f of x sub 1, this is code word for x sub 1, y sub 1, and x sub 2, y sub 2 on the graph, the average rate of change is f of x sub 2 minus f of x sub 1, which is this y minus this y over this x minus this x right here. So if you want to use them in terms of y's and x's, it would look like that. What does that look like? That's the good old slope formula of any line. So what's the average rate of change in the last uh, graph that we had on the interval two or 0 to 2? Here's x equals 0. Here's x equal 2. Okay, so we're going to follow uh, this formula. f of x sub 2 minus f of x sub 1 over um, 2 um, minus 0. Did I say x sub 1? f of x sub 0. Okay, so it's this uh, f of x minus this f of x. So f of x is just our y coordinates, you guys. So it's going to be um, uh, this number, 1, minus a negative 1 over this number minus this number right here. Okay, so f of uh, 2 minus f of 0. Whoops, that should be a 0 right there. Okay. I'm going to have to change that as we go along in these next few clicks right there, over 2 minus 0. Okay, so here we go. It's going to be uh, this y minus this y over this x minus this x. So as long as we do, uh, whoops, let me, let me change that to a 0. Uh, we're going to get uh, 2, I think, is or 2 over 2 is 1. Okay, so 2 over 2 is 1. Let me do one last switch. 
I email these to other teachers, so I just want to make sure they're correct before I email them to them, okay? Okay, so a function has a maximum value at a point where it changes from increasing to decreasing. And, and so on that last function, see how it goes, uh, it goes up and then it goes down. So there's one max value. Then here it goes up and it goes down. There's another max, up and down. So it has three max values, okay? A function has a minimum value where it go, changes from decreasing to increasing. So here it goes down and then up. So decreasing, increasing. There's a minimum. There's a minimum right here. Now this is not a minimum because the function is not going down on this side. It just starts right there. So that's why it, it's not a minimum right there. Okay, so uh, this one has two minimums right there, okay? So the max and the min values are just the y coordinates of those points right there. So the max is up here, uh, are ones right here, because it's the y coordinates, and the min's down here are negative ones, this one and this one right here, okay? And then a, a zero of a function is the value where the uh, of the x for which uh, the graph goes through x equals, or uh, goes through the, the x axes right there, okay? So when f of x equals zero, that's where it crosses it crosses right there at zero right there right there right there right there and right there so there are six zeros right there okay and so there x equals uh, x equals 1 x equals 3 5 7 9 and 11 so that's all the zeros are where does it cross the uh, x axis right there so what's the function's max value remember it's the y coordinate so it's 1 what's the minimum value it's the y coordinate so it goes down to to 1 how many zeros were there there were six zeros right there okay those those where it crosses the x-axis right there. All right, so here we're going to sketch a graph of each given the following verbal description. So, all right, we've got these big, ugly word problems. Don't let them fool you, you guys. Um, uh, we'll break through it here. So, Lyme disease is a bacterial and function transmitted by ticks. Okay, so when an infected tick uh, bites a human, uh, the probability of transmission is a function of time uh, since the tick attached itself to the skin. During the first 24 hours, the probability is zero. During the next uh, three 24-hour periods, the rate of change of the probability is always positive, so that means it's in increasing, but it's much greater for the middle part than the other two periods. That means it's steeper for the greater part right there. And then after 96 hours, the probability is almost 100%. All right, well, first of all, we need to make um, identify the axes and the scales right here. All right, so this is going to be our time down here, and this up here is going to be our, our probability right there, okay? So the x-axis is going to be the time in hours uh, for up to at least 96 hours. So we're going to go 24 hours past that. So that's going to be because they're in 24-hour periods. So 24 hours past that would be 120 hours, okay? And then the probability goes up to 100% over here. So there it is, all fixed up right there. And then here's the title, the probability of... Uh, transmission from an infected tick right there. Okay, let's just go through. We're going to start with this one right here. During the first 24 hours, the probability is zero. So here's hours. So from here to here, it's going to be zero. Here's the probability. So it's going to be a flat line right here for the first 24 hours right there. Okay, so that's what this says. This says right there. Now this says during the next three 24-hour periods. Okay, so the next three 24-hour periods. So here's one 24-hour, here's another 24-hour, here's another 24-hour, okay? Um, it says the rate of change of the probability is always positive, so it's going to increase from one, two, three of these cycles. So it's going to keep climbing, except the middle part's going to be steeper than the other parts right there, okay? So here we go. So it just means it's always going up when it's positive right there. And then that part right there, it's it's much greater for the middle period. So that just means it's going to be steeper. So how steep? Well, you get to decide on that part, but we're going to have to top it out at 100% up here. So it's going to be up here at 100% towards the end over here at 120 right there. Okay, so here we go. So I just made it positive. It's going up and here's the middle part. It's going up faster. So that's 24 hours. Notice how much more it's more steeper right there. Now you can make this go up to here if you want to. Just make sure the middle part is always the steepest part right there because it says the middle part is much greater and then, then the other two parts. So 
I don't know how steep that is in, in comparison to this one. I just know that this middle part is steeper than these two parts right there. Okay, so now we got that part. So after 96 hours, the probability, so here's 96, so after this would be over here, the next uh, cycle of 24, it's gonna go all the way up to 100% right there. Okay, there it is right there. Okay, let's try another one, you guys, and we'll stop. So from uh, 1974 to 1980, there were drastic uh, fluctuations in the incidence of meals in the U.S. So in 1975, there was a slight increase in the incidents from 1974. So where do we start on here? It doesn't tell us where to start, so I'm just going to randomly start at 10 right there. Okay, so how many incidents? Because it didn't tell us that. But in 1975, so this right here says the time in years uh, since 1974. So zero years since 1974 is 1974. One year would be 1975. This would be 1976, 77, 78, 79, 1980 right there, okay? And then these are the number of incidents. All right, let's go through then. And then, uh, so it says in 1975, there was a slight increase from the incidents in 74. So you start wherever you want. I'm going to start on 10 right there and just make it increase just a little bit, just a slight increase right there. The next two years saw a substantial increase in the incidents, which reached a max uh, in 1977 of about 26 cases. So here's, this is uh, 1974, 75, 76, 77. So we're going to make this go all the way up to 26 right there, okay? So it just said it had a substantial increase. Now, it, you can make this, you know, maybe go up and then up right there. You can make it one right there. There, You know, it's it's your choice right there. From 79 to, from 77 to 79, the incidence fell to about five cases. Okay, so let's fall it down to about five cases right there. Whoops. And then it says the incidents fell faster from 77 than it did to 78 right there. Okay, so we're going to go down to 1978. Here's 74, 75, 76, 77, 78 right there. Okay, so let's go ahead and take it down to five. The incidents fell much faster from 77 to 78. Okay, so then it did from 78 to 79 right there. Okay, so finally from 79 to 80, the incident stayed about the same. So we're going to do a little flat line right there. Okay, all right, you guys, uh, what else do we have? And remember the graphing uh, calculator exercise, it immediately follows this lesson. And if you're in my class, I'm going to assign you that. Take care.